Michelle, when, when you guys were after uh, Fast and Furious 7, were you wondering, okay, what, how can we top this? And, and, and what is the thinking there when you know there's going to be another one? Do you wonder what we're going to do next? I think after 7, my first thought was how and why move on? You know, more than anything, because we lost, we lost one of our brothers, and, and there was a big question of, like, can we? And if we do, why? And, um, you know, you know, you can have the studio influence and the money influence and, 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 and all of that, but that, you know, to a person like me doesn't really mean anything. Um, ultimately, is the crowd. It's the audience and, and, and the, their, their craving and desire to have more of themselves on the screen. And, and that's what we do for them. So I felt like I had a responsibility, you know, to be involved. And then all of a sudden, everything comes together and magic happens. <laughs> you know what I mean? How does this, the audience seeing themselves reflected in the screen work? Explain that. Well, I think it's uh, the diversity. It's the diversity. It's the it's the uh, it's 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 having people from different cultures around the world, which this film does go to different cultures around the world. This is only twenty five percent of the of the franchise's market, and um, you know when you look at when you look at that that penetration, it comes with a responsibility, and um, and and a lot of people don't take on that responsibility. So you know, little black kids in Africa are looking at you know a white superhero all the time. And they don't see movies of that scale, budget, in a non-sci-fi way with anybody of their own skin color. Same thing happens in places like South America, India, you know, I, you know, I could go on. <laughs> China. <laughs> but yeah. Well, especially, well, especially during troubled times like, like we're living right now, how, how, how important does that get? I think it becomes incredibly important. You know, I think a lot of people forget that sometimes, you know, uh, there are a lot of individuals in the world that, that really rely on their environment and the messages that they get from their environment to really adjust their confidence about uh, their dreams on moving forward in the world. And, you know, the more people that look like them, where they see in powerful positions or positions of freedom or positions of, of, of uh, independence, then the more likely that individual is to fight tooth and nail to get to that position because he thinks it's more possible than he did before when everything was just white. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like if you see that everything is run by white people and, and, and every superhero is white, you kind of start to think, well, where's my place in the world? And this is true. It's true for children. It's true for adults. And it, 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 it's true for the press. It's true for the media. It's true for commercials. It's true for, you know, dictators. <laughs> it's true for everything. It's a messages, man. And all, all we do is, you know, give people a ride. But at the end of the day, we're also giving a little bit of a message saying that, you know, there are different possibilities outside of what you're living in now. This franchise is known for its, its locations. At this time, you guys go to Havana, to Cuba. Yeah, isn't How that is so that? cool? I love the people there. They're so awesome. It's almost like when you don't have a bunch of stuff to worry about, you become more human. <laughs> I mean, you know, the humanity in that place and the spirit of those people, the drive, it's like innovation, just like, you know, uh, curiosity and, and an open heartedness to the people there. They're so warm. And I, I could see, you know, I could see why for so many years people have been attracted to Cuba from all over the world, you know. When we were there, Carl Lagerfeld was throwing his, his fashion show and he looked so happy. You know, I never see Carl Lagerfeld really smile after a show. Like, he was, like, really happy to be back in Cuba after so many years. And I thought that was special. You know, and our production being there, watching all the people, like, really enjoy the, the helicopter flying low in the middle of Havana. I mean, they, it was the first time in 60 years that they've had a production. You know, they've never had a production of that scale, but they've had anything even close to that, you know. Uh, so it's cool.
How complicated was it for the for the for the studio to put this part of it together? Oh my God, it was incredibly uh, you know complicated because it was in the middle of Obama opening up uh, uh, restrictions with Cuba, and uh, so a lot of those uh, restrictions weren't lifted when production had to get started. And in order to ship stuff down there, you had to start six months before. You know, so so production started six months before, you know, uh, even pre-production. <laughs> so, like, these guys were there basically doing this for almost half a year. <laughs> like, so, you know, I'm very, very proud of the Fast and Furious production for pulling it off. In terms of your character, um, it, she's gone from being good to being bad. And, we're, we're, and everybody seems to be going back and forth. Where are you at now? And we first... When we, when we run into you in this movie, what's going on? Are you good or bad? What, what's going on? Well, I mean, you know, yeah, everything's relative, isn't it? Um, yeah, no, it's 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 not about um, me being good or bad. It, it's it's that I had lost my memory. So, you know, I was just with the wrong crowd <laughs> at that time. And, you know, now the identity's back and, you know, Dominic Toretto and Letty, you know, they're on their honeymoon. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere... He goes rogue and ends up doing really, really bad things and stealing, you know, weapons of mass destruction. And we're like, he's a terrorist now? What is this? <laughs> What's going on? This isn't the Dom we know. Um, so, yeah, it's a very stressful movie for Letty, but uh, very fun for everybody else. <laughs> you know, there's lots of, uh, there's, a, there's a good ride on this one. I like the dynamic between Statham and, uh, and, and Dwayne. Um, I really like what those two characters uh, uh, bring to the table. And Tyrese, you'll get a laugh with him. Him and Chris are always going at it. And um, yeah, and the submarine, that, the submarine action in Iceland, I think people are really going to enjoy that. Uh, how um, timely is this new subject of terrorism? Well, I mean... You know, we never go heavy with anything because, you know, you're talking about a family franchise. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that they, they just browsed on it because every other big action movie franchise has touched upon. I mean, almost every big action movie franchise has some sort of terrorism in it because, you know, that's what it is. But I, I do think it's very relevant that there's hackers involved in this one. <laughs> and I do think that that is the future of terrorism. So... I mean, you know, are we with a crystal ball? No, it's kind of like what's happening now. <laughs> so, like, you know, I just think we're just, we're just, uh, you know, reflecting the times. <laughs> you know what I love about your character is that she is not your typical Hollywood woman. You know, she's, she's <laughs> she, can you comment on that? Do you feel, do you feel blessed <laughs> that you get to play this character? Other than oh, believe me, <laughs> the blessing came after the fights. <laughs> <laughs> I worked really hard to mold her into what she is, but I'm very grateful that you see her that way. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, if you don't see it on paper, you know, you got to kind of fight for it. If you really believe in it and you think that it will help the entire thing uh, succeed and be better, then you should fight for it. If you think that, you know, when you're looking at a role and, and it's typical and it's demeaning or it's, uh, it's, it, it's, it's not reflecting who you are, then don't do it, you know? But if you think that you can help the entire production, you know, and, 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 and help unite an entire team and, and bring something to the table of value, then do it. And that's what I did. So I'm, I'm kind of proud of all that work that I put in, you know, those years of like, this kind of dialogue is not going to work. And I don't think this character would do that kind of thing. You got to, it's, it, it, I mean, ultimately, you got a bunch of guys, you know, they, they probably just don't know. What, what a girl would be like in that situation. Or, or they think that all girls in the world are, you know, wearing hot string bikinis and like, <laughs> I don't know. But let me tell you, in the beginning stages of this franchise, like at the first one, it was the roughest. And after that, it became a lot easier. <laughs>